Good morning, Gauntlet community. Uh, my name is Robert Warburton. I am a member of the Gauntlet role-playing community. Go by Lashio on the Slack group and in the Google Plus community on Google Plus. Man, that's redundant. Uh, anyway, uh, I am back to do a second part to my uh, video series on doing uh, OBS software with Google Hangouts. Um, I produced the video last week, a couple days ago, on how to do green screening uh, with Google Hangouts, and a lot of you liked it. And I thought of a few things in the video that I mentioned, but then did not show how to do. I've also discovered a few new tricks that I want to share with you. So um, let's get started. Uh, first off, um, as I mentioned in the previous video, the reason I got started with this is I was having trouble with Google Hangouts uh, toolbox because my lower third kept disappearing. Um, the reason for that was my aspect ratio was set to 16 by nine, which is the native aspect ratio for my camera, um, which is this wider full box you're seeing here, um, the full 16 by nine width. I don't know why the Google Hangouts toolbar was crashing my lower third because of that, uh, but it was. So I did some research on how to change my aspect ratio for doing videos. And that's what led me to OBS and the virtual camera plugin and being able to do all this fun stuff. So I did want to share with you briefly uh, what I've discovered about primary or optimum aspect ratios. When doing Google Hangouts with people in the Gauntlet community, it seems like doing 720p with a 4x3 aspect ratio works best. Uh, most people seem to be running a 4x3 camera, and by having yours set to that, everybody's um, little box at the bottom seems to be the right size, and everybody seems to match. Um, you can do a uh, lower resolution, if you like, 720p normally does not have a 4x3 aspect ratio in, in its spec. Uh, however, you can create one. I figured out the numbers just by doing a little math. Uh, if you want to use 480p or 360p, Google Hangouts does support that. So how do you set up your screen? How do you set up your broadcast for these different aspect ratios and widths and heights, etc.? That's what I want to talk to you really briefly about here. So the way you do that is in your settings. You can get that in two ways. One is up here on the file menu, settings. The other is down here in your button bar settings. You just go to video. If you notice, mine are grayed out. The reason for that is my virtual camera is running. I'm going to stop it because I'm not actually using that to record this video. It's uh, what I use to broadcast to Google Plus or Google Hangouts, and I'm not doing that at the moment. <clears throat> so I disable it. I launch settings. I go to video. And here you see my canvas size and my output size. The output size is what is recorded if you hit the record button or what is sent to the virtual camera. The canvas size is what you see on screen here in your palette. Um, I like to make sure that no matter what size I have here, I keep the same aspect ratio up here or you run into some goofy issues. So basically I set the aspect ratio here I want the output and then I double it for up here and that usually gives me a nice uh, full screen size that I can work with. Now, um, so once you set that up, sorry about that. Once you set that up, you're, you're good to go and sorry about that. Um, you are good to go. You're ready to start making your screens and setting up your scenes. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is what do you do once you've set all these up? Um, if you're a GM running three or four games, you don't want to like spend 20, 30 minutes setting up all of these scenes and scene switches, uh, graphics, or whatever else you might want to be displaying to your users, and then have to completely change those for the next game. Uh, so what you can do is back up your scenes. And the way to do that is open up your file and go to the settings folder. 
Now at this point you want to close down OBS. So I'm gonna close OBS down. So this is the settings folder for OBS, which I launched from the OBS file menu. I go into basic and here you have scenes and profiles. Profiles is where things like your aspect ratio and or canvas ratio are set. You can back that up too. The scenes folder is where your scenes are stored. This is the backup of the Monster of the Week game scenes I use for Tears game. So if I wanted to back my current setup, I copy and paste, rename it to something, uh, you know, I will remember, new video. And now if I want to restore my Monster of the Week game, all I need to do is delete this guy and rename. Actually, I'm just going to copy, make a, another copy of that rename it back to just scenes and then relaunch OBS. When OBS launches it's going to read and it's going to see all my scenes from the Monster of the Week game as set up. Now the scenes folder does not contain your um, graphics or your video clips or anything else it's just the metadata for you know how to interpret your scene setup so i would recommend that you keep a uh, copy of any videos or images or anything related to a given set of scenes somewhere that you will not delete so i just reset my scenes back to my set up for this broadcast and there we go so that is pretty much everything to do with setting up your scenes backing up your scenes and um, I accidentally crashed a minute ago and I forgot to relaunch my OneNote um, so setting up hotkeys I probably should have done this before I showed you how to export scenes but anyway same basic thing you go to your your settings go to hotkeys and here you have a palette for each individual item and different things you can set hotkeys for. So for your scenes, scene default and scene new, you just go in here and say there should be one called switch to scene. In this case we have F1 and here we have switch to scene. I'm going to make that F2 and apply. Okay, now when I hit F1 and F2 I switch back and forth, but they're the same. So let's go to new and let's monkey about with it. Let's remove the lower third and we're going to take the camera and we're going to scale it out. Oh, I missed. I'll scale it out a bit and drag me off to the side here. So now when I hit F1 and F2, I'm switching between those scenes, right? So that's pretty much hotkeying and setting up aspect ratios and output you know, resolution that I forgot to talk about in the last episode. Um, export import of your scenes that's new I just discovered that yesterday and uh, I did want to show you how to deal with your output camera so um, as I mentioned before under tools virtual camera is where you can stop and start it I have mine set to auto start so whenever I start OBS uh, my virtual camera will start up you can crop your virtual camera output here but I don't do that. I prefer to do my cropping and everything at the canvas level uh, of my app. I'm not going to crop the output of my virtual camera differently. I leave that alone. Just start it. Once it's started, it's ready to go. Um, now, in order to use this with Google Hangouts, you just launch your Google Hangouts, which I'm waiting for my browser to load up here. I'm bringing my screen over here for you. So, this is just to show you that my Google Hangouts is running. All right, so here's my Google Hangouts. You're seeing in my Google Hangouts the output for my virtual camera. And the way you set that, if you don't see it initially, is go to your little control here and choose your OBS camera. It may be by default your virtual web camera or whatever so just just set OBS and save and boom now whatever I do in OBS you're gonna switch to over here now the reason my my Google would did some weird thing is um, it was active when I switched when I hit my F key 
I ran into a lot of my game, and I just switched back to the tab, so I can switch between cameras and what have you. So that's how you set up your virtual camera. Once you install it, you just have to turn it on and then assign it as your video source. Um, scaling of the camera itself. Now this is something I neglected to talk about. If you go into your camera, and if you notice here, um, my green screen only goes over to the, the edge over here on the right. You can see kind of what's going on in the background of my room. If I wanted to remove that, if I wanted to be able to move me around anywhere on the screen, I can do that by simply hitting the camera and hitting transform and then edit transform. And here you have a bunch of tools for changing things like your position and your rotation and all that. But primarily, I just use the left and right to crop out pieces of the camera bit that I don't want. So let's maybe make that uh, boom. So, and then we can crop out some of the top. Boom. And then I can still move my camera around all I want. Or if you want to go in here to transform, I can rotate it around, whatever you want to do. Uh, the disadvantage to scaling your camera down is now if I stick my hands off the side, whatever, they, they get cropped off if your full scene goes out. Um, you know, you're going to see that effect. But mostly when I'm doing games, I'm going to sit here in the middle anyway. So this lets me have a much smaller backing canvas and um, still have a nice effect. So if I let's go back to the screen here. So if I want to move my camera around, you know, I can do that with it here. Now, apparently that, that scaling was only on that one scene. It didn't translate over here. That's new. I didn't realize that. Um, that's pretty much it for scaling your camera uh, and doing camera effects. Um, the last thing I guess I wanted to talk about was the material choices. Um, let's bring me back over here and let's edit my camera. And let's go to transform. Edit transform. We're going to set this back to zero, zero, zero. Give me my full camera. And then I'm going to go to filters and turn off my green screen, my chroma key. <laughs> Boom. So now you can see uh, my green screen material. Back, back on the wall in the far distance there is my original green screen material I bought from Hobby Lobby. I think I spent about $20 on uh, two pieces of five foot long um, green matte cloth. And it worked really good. Uh, the stuff you see behind me now, and I've got some lights, which you might be able to see over here. Uh, I got that as a kit on Amazon.com for, I think, $80. Um, this is actually the correct chroma key color. However, you don't need to spend that money. The, the regular green, the darker green over there worked just fine. This just gives me a little bit less uh, green halo you know, around my head, and uh, the lights help with that as well. Um, Again, they're not necessary. I'm just having fun with this, uh, seeing what I can do and what I can learn. So uh, if you go to Hobby Lobby, just make sure you get a non-reflective. You want a matte finish green cloth, preferably a deep green to a sort of a bright color green. Just make sure it's not reflective. And that's pretty much all you need. And that pretty much covers it for what I wanted to go over in this video. Um, I do plan to do two more videos, one specifically for GM tips and tricks and one for player tips and tricks. Um, if you guys enjoyed this, find it useful, informative, or if I just suck, whatever, just tell me. Uh, if you don't like it, I won't waste my time in the future. If you do like it, uh, I'll come up with new things. Have a great day and thanks for watching.